Hi there, I'm Alex Warren, I'm the creator of the Quest Text Adventure Game System and in this short screencast I'm going to show you how to get started creating your own game using Quest. There are two different versions of Quest, there's a version you can download for Windows and there's also a version which you can access using any web browser. In this demonstration I'm going to show you how to use the browser version but the process is pretty much the same whichever version you're using. To get started creating a game, log in to the textadventures.co.uk website and click Create or Edit a Game. Let's enter a name for our game. I'm just going to call this one Test Game. I'm going to leave the game type and language set as they are and click the Create button and start editing. If you're just starting out in Quest, it's a good idea to turn on the simple mode from the settings. This cuts down on the distractions of the more advanced functionality which we don't need for now when we're just starting out. So here we have a fairly empty game, it's just got one room which the player starts in and if we were to play this game now we would find it very boring. So let's start customising it a bit. Let's uh, change the name of this room to library and let's add a book into the library here. Every object that you add to a quest game should have a description associated with it so that something happens when the player types look at the object. So let's make something happen when the player types look at book. We can either choose to just show some text or we can run a script. I'll talk about scripts in a moment. For now we're just going to add a simple text description for the book. I'm going to say uh, it's a copy of Around the World in 80 Days. And if I play this game now, we'll see that the player starts off in the library. There's a book here, and we can click on the link to look at the book, and it gives us the description that we just entered. Let's add another room into this game now, so the player has got somewhere else to go. Click on this Add Room button here. I'm going to add a canteen into this game. Now if I were to play the game now, it would look exactly the same as before because the player hasn't got any way of going between the library and the canteen. To make it so that they can get between the two rooms, we need to add an exit between them. To do that, I can click on the Exits tab here and I can choose one of the directions. So I'm going to say that the player can go east from the library into the canteen. Let's choose Canteen from this drop-down list over here and Create Exit. Quest will also create an exit in the other direction, so the player can go east from the library into the canteen and then west from the canteen back into the library. Let's add some objects into the canteen now. If I click on canteen, click on add object, I'm going to add in a bowl of ice cream and I'm going to also add a spoon. I want the player to be able to eat the bowl of ice cream with the spoon. To do that, I'm going to set up a verb on this bowl of ice cream here. If I click on the Verbs tab and click Add, I can type in Eat. And I can choose what happens when the player types in Eat Bowl of Ice Cream. In this case, just for the moment, I'm going to print a message that says It tastes delicious. Let's click Play. I can go east now from the library into the canteen and I can see that bowl of ice cream and the spoon that I just added. The bowl of ice cream now has an eat link on it and when I click that it displays the text that I just entered. But let's make it a bit more interesting. I think that the player should only be able to eat a bowl of ice cream if they've picked up the spoon. Otherwise they're going to get very messy hands. So let's make it so the player can pick up the spoon. I click on the spoon object here and go to the inventory tab and I can click on this object can be taken box here. That allows the player now to pick up the spoon. But now for my bowl of ice cream when the player goes to eat it I want something different to happen depending on whether the player has picked up the spoon or not. To do that I need to run a script. Now scripts are the real power behind Quest. With a script you can do absolutely anything in the game. You can show a picture, you can play a sound and you can also make different things happen in different situations. So I'm going to go back to that eat verb I just added and instead of just printing the same message every time the player uh, enters eat bowl of ice cream I'm going to run a script instead. Now if I click on this add new script button here I can see all the different types of scripts that I can add into the game. In this case I want something different to happen depending on whether the player has picked up the spoon or not. So from the scripts tab here I can choose if. 
So in this case, I'm going to require that the player is carrying an object, in this case, the spoon. So I can choose player is carrying object from that list there, and I can choose spoon over here. So I can say if the player is carrying the spoon, then print a message. In this case, I'm going to have that same message that I had before, or something similar. And the other thing that I'm going to do is now hide that bowl of ice cream away so the player can't eat it a second time. And to do that, I can click on the Objects tab here, and I can make Object Invisible. So let's make that bowl of ice cream invisible when the player eats it. Now I also need something else to happen if the player tries to eat the bowl of ice cream but they don't have the spoon. So to do that, I can add an else here. And in this else section, I'm just going to print a message saying that you can't eat it at the moment because you haven't got the right equipment. So let's test if that works now. Let's go uh, east into the canteen. Let's see what happens if I eat the bowl of ice cream now. It tells me I can't eat it because I'll get messy fingers. Let's take that spoon then and see what happens. Now we'll see that the spoon has now moved into my inventory here and I could drop it again by clicking this button here. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to see what happens if I try to eat the bowl of ice cream a second time. Eat bowl of ice cream and I get that message that I entered in earlier and notice as well that the bowl of ice cream has now disappeared from the places and objects list here. If I try to eat the bowl of ice cream again, it says I can't see that. So that's how we add a very simple puzzle into our game. I hope I've given you a rough idea of how Quest works. I've only been able to really scratch the surface uh, in this brief screencast. If you click on the help button in the web version of Quest, you can get to the full tutorial. There's also a link in the Windows desktop version as well. And if you follow that through, that will guide you through at your own pace, building up your very first game. And if you need any more assistance, then do come along to the forums, textadventures.co.uk slash forum. You can also contact me, alex at textadventures.co.uk, and you can find me on Twitter at Alex Warren.